Welcome to Exploring the Ozarks and Perfect, thank you. <laughs> We're doing a, a catch up episode. <laughs> That works, man. That and works. I didn't tell anybody I was going to do that because I didn't know I was going to do it until I did I was it, just so. rolling with it, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, it was you, great. You know, so was great. we're doing a catch-up episode here with David Romano, who is the <laughs> president of the organization for River Access Coalition. That's right. Um, yeah, so we, we had you in for, like, what was it, several months ago now? And yeah, it was beginning right before summertime, I think. It was yeah. still a little chilly out, but yeah. you guys are really rocking and rolling on the River Access Coalition. So, David Romano, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's uh, been a while, but it feels like forever ago now, but we took a hiatus just to kind of catch up on some other stuff that we needed to do, and um, always are watching what you're doing with River Access Coalition, and... um, you know, right before we went on, I said, thank you for doing what you do, because like, I just got back from the Buffalo River and, um, you know, even on trails and in a place that is a wilderness area, you still find trash, you know, yeah. you still find people that are willing to throw their right. trash out or their little straws and things like that. And you're just, you're just like, come on, man. So we're always picking up trash, even on trails this weekend, we were picking up trash along the way, but doing what you do is way more intense than just going out and picking up some trash. I mean, you guys, for those of you that might not have seen the episode, give us a gentle, quick rundown of what transpired for, what, two years? Well, don't be gentle. Be harsh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but Let's dive quick. in. You know, yeah. be quick about it. I like it, that. But, you know, harsh. <laughs> harsh. Because <laughs> there's some stupid stuff that happens. Yeah, very. I mean, you... <laughs> stupid stuff. Sir. Yeah. That's right. I mean, very accurate yeah. statement. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess it, it all started like three or four years ago. Probably about four, I'd say. Yeah, and uh, the way I found out about it, I was a member of a clean stream team for the Finley River, and then suddenly they posted on their Facebook page uh, this gate and uh, said the landowners have closed off access. It's a private road. To Linden Lure on the to, Finley. Right, yeah. to Linden Lure and the Finley, and... We started digging. We started trying to talk to the commissioners. They wouldn't talk to us, the ones who were commissioners back then. And Wild me. Uh, we, we started saying, I'm not sure that's a private road and, and so forth. And eventually we found out it was not a pup private road and they had been not even grading it for years right yeah. and there were even some landowners downstream who had lost access to their own properties and they became <laughs> our allies in this i uh, didn't we didn't explore that last yeah, time though yeah. they lost access to their own property because that road was blocked off exactly so exactly. no one moved it. Yeah, and, and, and <laughs> I so, guess you couldn't move it. And and somehow the presiding commissioner of Christian County at the time, Ralph Phillips, saw fit to say, "Oh, it's just private," and not even meet with us. And then we found out he has friends who live up above the dam there who wanted it closed. He told us as much. Oh, good. Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> I've got a word for that, but I'm not going to say it here. Uh, stupid. <laughs> like I said before, it's just stupid. Douchebag. <laughs> Douchebag. Sorry. 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 I didn't say. It. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> and so eventually we had to take it to court and we brought all kinds of witnesses, including a former sheriff, Joey Kyle, who was like, yeah, I was on that road with my deputies all the time, all the time, writing parking tickets for <laughs> if they parked on the wrong side of it and this and that drunk and, driving, whatever right, else right. crazy stuff would happen. <laughs> yeah. And now Christian County didn't have all the, they don't have great records on some of these roads, especially dirt ones like that. So, sure. And it's yeah. a small road too, <clears throat> right. really. It's like a little spur road and that's it. Yeah. yeah. So we ended up not being able to prove it was public via statute via statutory law because the the records weren't there wow uh, at least not enough of them but we showed it to be public by uh public easement and uh public access for there all that go. time the recorder's and, office was his nightmare at that point then wasn't it because uh, yeah, it's all there right yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like us for a i bet <laughs> that reminds <laughs> me when when we first moved to missouri we were my parents were trying to get like records of like our property lines right and they went to the recorder's office this christian county mm-hmm. and uh they had drawn it like in pencil or crown or something Shut like that up. and that was serious? like the board that's what they had turned into the recorders it was just so it was family property before that no then, no, right? no 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 oh. we bought it from a developer <laughs> and that's what happened and their inspector <laughs> just went by and went yeah that's that's about right <laughs> All right, so some of these property <laughs> deeds and stuff, you, you'd be astounded. I, That's I, what I was going to say. Right. I have yeah. I have had friends that bought property in, like, Dallas County, so you're talking up toward Buffalo, Niangua area, and mm. it was a big family chunk of property that they bought a small piece from, one of the family members, and yeah. the lot line went right through the middle of their living room. 
Oh, and gosh. so back in those days when there was families that would own a thousand acres or so, they would just say, Hey, Johnny, go pick out the corner by the road. So we know where you're at and just start building and put up a fence, do whatever you need to do. But they never would survey it. They never would record anything. It was just, here you go. And now we're yeah. going to say, this is our lot lines, family property. And nobody ever knew that the lot line was in the middle of the house, obviously. So we had to do a whole bunch of stuff just to get that deal closed. <laughs> and it was a nightmare. But so that's, you We're still very it. archaic in this it. area is right. what it boils down to is what I'm hearing. So yeah. so just to know where it – so you guys sadly had to fight, fight our own county government for a road access for one of the most popular uh, accesses to any river I know of. Um, and, I mean, every time I'd go by there in the summertime, it was packed full of people, yeah. right? So all those people lost that. They probably lost interest. Some of them still probably don't even, don't even know what's going on down there. Um, long story short is that you guys fought this, and how long did it take you to fight it before it got back open? About two years. Two years. Wow. That's and it's, insane. It's still not even technically done because they appealed the court ruling, which was very definitive in our favor. <laughs> And uh, the they, county appealed it. No, no, the county was like, all right, we're good. Right. Uh, right. Move on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thankfully. Money. Yeah. Thankfully. And also the leadership in the county has now changed uh, for the better, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but the landowners appealed it. And uh, we had the appeal hearing on January 11th uh, of this year. So that's like, I guess, nine months ago or so. Wow. Uh, um, yeah. There hasn't been a ruling yet. I, I've since found out that there's no time limit for how long it may take to issue a ruling. That's but crazy. until then, it does stay open, correct? right? Because and so, that was the ruling before, right? I don't mind. Like, I mean, yeah. the public take has all the time you want. right. The public has access, and uh, I'd like them when they do issue a ruling to have taken their time to study all the law and all the yeah. facts that we presented. Oh yeah. And then I'm confident uh, we'll win again. Right. Yeah. Which it's terrible that though that this is self-funded. You know that type of thing that you're talking about a private you know is it a non-profit that you guys started with the yes RAC? it's a so, registered 501c3 right. we had to learn how to do that too. yeah <laughs> which is a whole rigmarole too it is. get the minutes book and have a board of sure. directors and all that and so but you guys are fighting this good fight for all these people to just have access to a natural stream that should have access to it anyways which is what we touched on last time of why you're doing it anyways but to self-fund it and take it this far and fight it this long um are you guys doing any fundraisers, I guess, would be the, the short end of that? Because you probably ought to get some help from the public on this. I mean, to me, it seems like you shouldn't be self-funding this. Yeah, we've been doing uh, yard sales. We've had a kayak raffle. Ozark Mountain Trading Company donated a kayak for awesome us to, for to raffle up. So Good. they've been stepping up to the plate and supporting us. Good. Uh, it's been really nice. And, you know, it's allowed us to make all these connections throughout the community. At Earth Day, we've been participating and having a table there Good. and nice. meeting like-minded yeah. environmental groups that mm -hmm. are active. Because uh, we, we want this to not just be about the Lyndon Lorax, Access. There's access he's threatened all over the state. And so we made a good working relationship with backcountry hunters and anglers good. who you've had on. Yeah, we us. talked about mm -hmm. them too. Yeah. They're great people. Yeah. yeah. But you Do know, you, the, the problem is, is that it's not just about river accesses, though, to me. This is about a much bigger issue with politics in general of what goes on when we don't know about it, right? They made a decision right. to shut it off. And just say, we're done dealing with all these people that come through here and breaking bottles and drinking and whatever else. But that is why we're in America in the first place. Is so you can take that chance of getting caught doing it. Or yeah. you can go be a law-abiding citizen and go hang out at the river for a while, which is what 99% yeah. of the people want to yep. do anyways. Yep. Um, but it, it goes way further than that. So to me, you're, you're diving in and you're fighting the system on something to me that should be obvious that it should be open anyways right i know right. there's a problem with some people right 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 and that's something we we all have to work on and, and this has helped us work on it like nowadays you go over to linden lore now and it's clean oh man yeah uh, it, it's like it's it's way way better than in the past yeah. so well, nice and to i see, see you you organize all you, your group is organizing all the time cleanups and you're doing general yeah. calls yeah. to people out there to clean up and yeah always well, reminding people to do that kind of stuff and it's right. huge yeah. What we've been doing is like regular cleanups. And for us, that means uh, in warm weather months, uh, uh, every like month or two, we, we do a cleanup, but also mm -hmm. raising awareness yeah. so that we, ha we have members who just go on their own any average day of the week. And it's a bit like a broken windows theory when yeah. it's already pretty clean. 
people litter less. And I, I've been seeing oh, less yeah. litter accumulating in the first place. Well, yeah, that because it's almost yeah. natural for some people to think, oh, there's trash already here. So what's the, what's the difference? Exactly. Even though every little bit of trash stacks up, it drives me bonkers yeah. in this area. So, uh, but seeing it on the river and seeing what you guys have done and then seeing what the James River Water Basin Partnership has done as well has been truly amazing because I float both of those rivers and just seeing the difference 20 years has made. And that's crazy to think that it's taken this long and it's still not ever going to be perfect you know you still see those little airplane shooters everywhere or a pile of beer cans up against you know on the riverbank or something like that Mm. and i think there's enough people that float now that will go pick up other people's trash it's just sad that we have to do that i live on the highway and i talk about it all the time that there's always someone who's driving down my road once a week dropping off a mcdonald's bag for me on my road or a mattress yeah or 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 a group of mattresses lately (laughs) and i'm like you couldn't have waited less than 10 more minutes (laughs) so that's a shout out to our, our sponsor. Yes, you know, Matt. He, he was telling us he was telling stories about how people's mattresses oh, fly off because they don't I, strap it down. Yeah, and I have a good relationship with MoDOT now. <laughs> I, I got a dash cam on my car, so I've got them oh, all no. on video. When oh, they gosh. Do this. I've tried for sometimes you. sending it to like local police, but they must be like, who is this not bad sending us these <laughs> This guy's videos. always doing this trash stuff. What does he want us to do? So so I have to ask because we're actually getting yeah. ready to wrap up. Yeah, yeah. Um, with it because it's just a quick update. We could go. Sure. Wait. Yes, we could. So, uh, what are the future plans? I know we, we talked in the past about you guys are trying to get other access points, maybe reopened. Yeah. Um, is that still something in the books, or is that something that... Yeah, yeah, there, there's like, uh, we approached Taney County about, we had talked about it last time, about one, I always call it Good Hope Hollow, but I think it's Good Night Hollow. Yeah, Good right. Night Hollow, down on the Bull, Bull <laughs> right, Creek, right. though. Yeah, And, and uh, we were gratified to hear back from them that they had actually incorporated some public parking. It's just oh, not nice. where you'd expect. It's not the best spot. It <laughs> There's like, not a good spot down there, right, though. Right. I know where you're talking about. But, but they had uh, foreseen this, and, and there's a spot where you can park that ends in a gate to someone's land, but that's actually where they intended the public to park. So we're oh. good with them on that one. Good, yeah. Yeah. good. And, and then we're working on some others and yeah. uh, assessing them and planning some other activities. We're hoping to do a kind of build your own little boat and race it down the, the fin. Oh, oh, that's, a, oh, that's an amazing <laughs> idea. So would you go from Linden Lure down to uh, Maybe from like the, the, bri- the bridge down to where it gets deep. I was going to say, uh, not very far, probably. Not very far. Because uh, <laughs> once boats. you get going, it's pretty rough sometimes. But, um, That's good to know. Did you guys just do a cleanup, or did we did we miss yeah, the last cleanup? Yeah, we, we, yeah. we did one uh, October 1st. Right. Okay, so keep paying attention to the River Access Coalition's uh, Facebook page. is probably the easiest place to get that information. But uh, yeah. jump in there. Help them out. I love your fundraising ideas. Let us know when the, the, the homemade boat race is happening. We'd <laughs> love to come out and watch that one um, because that is such an easy spot to do. It, it is pretty flat yeah, there, yeah. so you better not have a boat that doesn't float, right? We'll, right. we'll put your dash cam on those boats. Oh, good idea. Oh, my gosh. Well, um, <laughs> with a little man, a little Lego figure. There we go. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Love it. Well, well, I think those types of fundraisers are super yeah. important because it does get people out. It's interesting to me, and it's like you see the uh, what is it, the homemade like uh, cars that they send yeah, down the hills in Europe. Cars. Or, yeah, and yeah. they're it's pretty much a disaster every time. So sure. I think this might be a little more safe, to be honest with you. But <laughs> um, but otherwise, David Romano, thank you so much for coming and giving us an update. What do you guys have planned in the nearest future? We can look forward to. Well, for the winter months, uh, we yeah. got to get together and uh, decide that. I, I'm, I'd be scared to say at the moment. <laughs> you can pick up trash along the banks of the river, right. though. So. But, exactly. you know, and if you're anything like me, if you're out there at these, uh, you know, places, these put-ins or whatnot, uh, make sure that you just take – I always keep some type of bag on me, like a Walmart sack right. or something at least, and go pick up what you see type thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, because the last thing you need is your kid getting into some glass or something when they're on the river. Yeah. It's terrible. And they're exactly. not around, anywhere around anything so um, but david thank you so much river access coalition check them out on facebook uh go to the uh, facebook page and get involved with it because you have to join the group to be in it uh facebook and private groups are wonderful for that but uh join it because there's obviously going to be some cool events and some good entertainment coming up so david thank you so much for being here we appreciate thanks for it. having me you bet. thanks again for listening to exploring the ozarks Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our social media channels to help us keep exploring the stories of the Ozarks. If you're looking for more ways to support our show, we have sponsorships for businesses and Patreon for individual supporters. Check the links in the description for more details. Thanks for your support, and keep exploring the Ozarks.